Hello and welcome back to Revender and Sports and another edition of what is in our stand today. That's a hashtag you can follow across all my social media. So Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and of course here on YouTube. Today we're going to talk about a headset lube and adjust. And the reason why this is going down is customer came in with a creak, creak, creak. I've already done the bottom bracket, the pedals, the crank set, the skewers, and I've reduced a lot of the noises. So there was a lot of things creaking, but in this case, I really think it's the headset. And let me show you why. So on the bearings, so this is the lower bearing, and hopefully this will focus in for you. But see all that corrosion? This is the lower bearing that sits on the fork. And, you know, the bottom bearing gets a lot of abuse. It's the first that takes the hit when you, you, you hit potholes and things like that. And also, a lot of the water will spray up from the front tire. And it just sprays up into the headset fork area and it just sprays up and, and it gets all in there. So when I took this apart, first thing I noticed was it was really dry. There was no grease and I like to put copious amounts of grease because it, it acts as an element barrier. So sand, water, whatever will not get in there if the grease is occupying that space. So just think of something if it's occupying the space, then something else can't get in there. So uh, people have asked, what type of grease do I use? Honestly, as long as you're using a good quality grease, it doesn't matter. But I use the Phil Wood grease, and I'll bring that up towards the camera as well. As you can tell, I'm working alone, so there's not going to be uh, the perfect camera angles. But, oh, actually, I got two house notes first. First one is I've shut off my, my monitor so you don't have the, the screensaver bouncing around like uh, Pong from the old uh, 80s Atari game. I think it was 80s. And then also Rick Liang uh, mentioned that in the gravel UCI World Championship gravel race, there was a floodlight spotlight behind me that kept um, affecting the, well, the pleasure of watching me rant <laughs> so i do listen to feedback if you hit me up either in the notes or send me an email be kind be courteous otherwise i will just ignore you because I, there's just no reason for negativity okay so let's let's talk about what i've done so far what i've done so far is i've already cleaned this bottom uh, the bottom portion of the headset area, the top portion, or let, let's call that the crown of the fork, because there was corrosion there as well. So I cleaned all that up. I cleaned inside here as well, because there was corrosion there. And now I'll just briefly clean the top portion, and then I'll start assembling everything for you. What you may not be able to see is I've got a, a, a small bench stool underneath here and it's just to hold the fork so it's just not hanging down to the ground and if you're using you know hydraulic lines and stuff like that you just don't want to have to do extra work if you pinch a hydraulic line because it's hanging and whatever right so be be careful with your customer's bike and of course your own bike so that you don't have to do a lot of extra work all right so I'm going to switch around to the other side of the bike. And so this top portion here, any rag will do. I usually use a solution of Dawn and water. And that's just the basic cleaning solution that I use for most things. So I just spray some in there. and clean that bearing race because you want that nice and clean and dry before you put 
any type of grease on there. So, and then that bottom bearing that I mentioned before that was dirty, I'm going to clean that real quick. And, you know, it doesn't have to be any fancy cleaners or anything. Honestly, I think people uh, think they need to have bike specific cleaners for everything when in actuality all you need is a good cleaning product and i find that dawn is 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 a very good cleaning product look at all that corrosion and stuff i'm getting off of this it's a good cleaning product and it's non-toxic and uh, especially in my shop i just don't like to smell a lot of excess cleaning fluid fumes if you will so i've already checked the bearing it's a little notchy. It could probably be replaced. So this is what I do to check a bearing. I just put my fingers through the bearing and then just rotate it. So you got to put some preload. You got to put some pressure on the bearing and, and turn it. And then you could, you could feel or hear any type of um, notchiness. So it's a little bit. It could probably be replaced maybe on the next time out. But it's fine okay so we clean the bearing we've cleaned the races already now for those of you who've asked me about what type of grease i use i just use this phil woods grease it works fine for me and i like as i mentioned before i like to put copious amounts of grease because then as i'm putting it together the grease that squeezes out or i should say I'm looking for grease to squeeze out because then I know I've got enough in there and that the rest of that is now excess. So what I'm going to do is put some grease here on the bottom of this race. Now, so the funny thing is that the bottom bearing takes a lot of abuse from the impact and the water that splashes up here or any type of dirt that splashes up here. And then the top bearing usually gets a lot of corrosion from heavy sweaters. And I know that there was a gentleman and I, 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 um, I think it was Charles Mann um, was asking about, hey, let's talk about headsets. I, you know, I'm constantly servicing my headset and I got a lot of corrosion. You know, there really is no solution to that except, you know, ride faster and let the sweat <laughs> blow behind you instead of down onto your handlebar and stem and just keep servicing this stuff. Okay, so these bearings, they're exactly the same. Now, with a lot of modern bikes, they're putting these massive bearings down here. Uh, one and a quarter, one and a half inch, and then up here, the fork will then taper to a one and an eighth up top. So if you confuse your bearings, usually the biggest bearing is going to go on the bottom, right? In this case, they're both the same. So we'll just clean this one up. And we start getting everything ready to assemble. All right, for some reason, and I've never seen this before, this specialized diverge had this extra rubber gasket. So, well, we're gonna put it back because it was there. I, I've never seen that before, but we're gonna put it back. Okay, so we're gonna move this fork just a little bit so we can get it out from inside the frame. Move the table out of the way just slightly. Put the bearing down. Sorry, washer first, bearing down. Then insert that into the frame Being careful of your shift cables in this case. Once that fork goes in there, since I've already put grease up here, 
put that bearing in. And then you have this ring and you put this ring in there. Uh, the conic, the small side down. Oh, there's a little bit of corrosion on that. Didn't see that before. So let's wipe that clean. So once again, I use lube for that as well. And then I start putting the headset back on. And when the important thing is you have to remember how your headset was set up originally. So if you are working on someone else's bike, you got to make sure you put the correct spacers in the correct way. And um, you'll excuse me, but a customer popped in here completely unannounced. And I may have to cut this video short. I'm wondering why this is, oh, because it's stuck behind this. Sir, if you would mind just Sorry about that. Just for a sec. We'll be with you in just a sec. All right. Now we put the headset on or the top screw in. And I always like to put a little bit of, of grease on that as well. Especially if you have a star nut like this. So you'll want to make sure that that goes on there. So as I mentioned, I do have a customer that just popped in, so I'm gonna cut this video short. But all that's left to do now is tightening up your headset and straightening out your handlebar. And then I use this wrench here to torque the headset bolts. I'm sorry, the stem bolts. And because most of them are five Newton meters. So that usually is the... Um, the torque value for most stem bolts. Okay, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate your time and your attention. Please like and subscribe, and in the meantime, we'll see you up the road.